America's favorite entertainment, stand up comedy. A Pakistani American, Jabran Saleem, is emerging as an up and coming comedian with jokes that reference his skin color. Michael Sarah, right? right? Because I'll meet someone and I'll be like, hi, my name is Jabran. And they'll be like, oh, nice to meet you, Muhammad. I'll be like, what? How in the world did they get my middle name? That is amazing. Are they psychic? I have no idea. This comedy club in New York City has a reputation for showcasing emerging comedians like Gibran. I'm here. Gibran's here. I'm here. In the past few months, he has been given the opportunity to perform here weekly. Hi. Cool. Like Gibran, it's like LeBron. He challenges people's perception of his skin color, which happens to be brown. And you have to do push ups and you have to diet. And I asked this lady on the street what time it is, right? She looked at her watch, she said 9 11. Then she looked at me and she was like, no offense though. <laughs> and I'm like, what? No offense? That's all you had to not say to not make it offensive. That's literally the only two things you could have said to make it offensive. I can't argue about this, I'm late for work. She's like, oh, what do you do? And I'm like, Ashley, I do therapy with people who are intellectually challenged. No offense, though. <laughs> she was like, I can't believe you said that. I was like, yeah, well. People are more comfortable when they see a brown person to refer to them as Indian. But that bothers me because not all brown people are from India. And it's just easier to, to articulate, it's easier to communicate. And there's a certain level of silliness to it. I don't know, brown's kind of funny to me. It's just a funny word. Like this was in the South, like once I got pulled over, I was in In another story, Gibran, as a brown person, is questioned by a small town policeman. Where I was from. Hey, where are you from? And I'm like, oh, I'm from Pakistan. And he looked at his clipboard very confused. Then he looked back at me confused. And he looked back down and he wrote, Indian. And I'm like, dude, that's not the country that I mentioned out of my mouth. There was no need for confusion. I literally said, he's like, yeah, dude, he was like, they're right next to each other. It's the same thing. And I'm like, yeah, but then that means you're Mexican. It's not exactly the same just because it's right next to each other. Dude, it's crazy. Thank you so much. It's exciting because it's so, it's like, it's almost offensive, or like to some people it might be almost offensive, but it's not. And so that's why it's funny. It's gonna be raw. Yeah, yeah it's, it's raw. like real. I think that's what people like, especially in an intimate setting like this. Yeah. A lot of the jokes I can actually relate to, because I, you know, what he said, it's actually very similar to the things I've been through. So, so that's why it's very funny for me. I, I can't relate at all, but I thought it was great, so... <laughs> and I want people to feel comfortable saying brown. It's not an offensive... It's only offensive if they're like, oh, brown, you know, then that's bad. But if they're like, oh, he's brown, you know, that's cool, yeah, so... New York is renowned as one of the top cities for enjoying stand-up comedy. The city is filled with countless comedy clubs of all sizes. You can satisfy a craving for comedy any night of the week. Performing stand-up comedy is one way to break into the limelight as an entertainer. Many famous Hollywood stars, from Robin Williams to Chris Rock, started out as stand-up comedians. But most successful comedians in the U.S. are either white or black. Few Asian comedians have achieved success because of underrepresentation in the media and a stereotypical view of Asians as being too serious. Gibran wants to change that. So many other Asians in America, they're so practical because their family came to make a better life. And making a better life means stability, income, family. And you're not going to get that from risk, from rolling the dice. And that's what the creative field is. You're rolling the dice a little bit. Recently, Gibran's comedy career has started to gain momentum. Comedy industry insiders are taking note of his talent. Good, not bad. 
Last summer, a management company for comedians offered to represent him. You know, whether it's this or something David Kimowitz is an industry veteran. He's helping Gibran work out his next move. If Divine doesn't happen, I think it'll be something else regardless. At this point, I just, I just... You definitely deserve a callback. Thank you, yeah. So you did really well. Um, you. My impression is that, based on that, you will get the callback. And yeah. it's not... It, it, I would be surprised in one year. I mean, I think the material's getting better. I still have the same joke. But, I mean, it was much more to me. Right. Uh, I'm much more animated now, which is something yeah. I've developed over the year. Since we even started working, uh, he's just gotten better and better. Stage presence is, is incredible. And he writes really unique jokes about his experiences that are just really funny. Uh, so I'm very impressed by him. I think he has a bright future. 30-year-old Gibran is a first-generation American, the son of Pakistani immigrants. He studied hard with his parents' encouragement. After graduating from a prestigious state university, he went on to complete a master's degree in psychology in New York. He decided not to let his academic credentials dictate his choice of career. He continued searching for his calling until he found comedy. I lived near a comedy club. I went in and I watched an open mic. And I was like, oh, yeah, I could do this. And then, like, six months later, over the six months, I kind of started writing, trying to write jokes, trying to learn about writing jokes. And six months later, I went and I did an open mic, and then I just kept on doing it. Even with five years of on-stage experience under his belt, it's still hard to make a living on performance gigs alone. His psychology degree enabled him to get full-time work as a counselor. He visits clients at homeless shelters around the city. I enjoy the job, but it's not my bigger picture. Now I know what I want to go after, which is comedy. Once I go on stage, then, this, then it feels good, and then it's like, oh, this is why I do it because now like the burden of everyday world and society, and it's all gone. It's only for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. But when you get off stage, it's like, it's just like you, your, your brain farted out all the, all the dust and you're back in action. And it's, it's a really good feeling. Um, and that's why I do comedy, because it's amazing when you're on stage and just the process of creating jokes are like puzzles. In 10 days, Gibran has a performance coming up at a famous comedy club. He is working on the jokes he plans to perform there. Gibran is looking for ways to broaden his appeal beyond his brown skin jokes. He found the solution in his monkey joke about a passerby mocking him by calling him monkey. The word monkey is sometimes used as a racial slur against people with dark skin. But this joke is not really about racial discrimination. It brings up race. But the joke itself isn't really about race. It's about the emotion that people understand. Like, so now I'm setting up the joke, I kind of mentioned that sometimes I'm a little bit racially paranoid. They're starting to identify you as a character and how you're responding in this situation is particularly funny because that's how you would respond. His success at the club will depend on how effectively he can deliver the monkey joke. While Gibran is fine-tuning the joke, he receives a special visitor. It's his mother. Gave them a little post-it note with a little stick figure on it. He Afshan is his unflagging supporter. So I had to go and sneak behind his back and try to give them a picture. Gibran kept his dream of becoming a stand-up comedian secret for a long time. He told his mother only recently. Although she had her reservations, 
She stood behind his choice. So I'll show you this. It was tough getting used to the idea and we feel it. You know, just like anybody, uh, any parent wants their sons to succeed. Every time I see anybody else succeeding, I'm like, but my son is better than that. I say, In combination. <laughs> okay, but he's better than that. How come he's not up there? <laughs> The night of Gibran's performance at the Big Comedy Club has arrived. This club is well known for featuring world famous comedians. Make some noise, Gotham Comedy Club! Studio audience, bring it up, bring it up! It's Tuesday night There may even be a TV or movie producer seated in the audience. That monkey joke is pretty much done. I mean, it's just a very short joke now. It won't be a bit, it'll be a shorter joke. My friend, Mr. Gibran, Salim, ladies and gentlemen. Let him hear, let him it's out. now time for Gibran to take the stage. I moved to New York at a nine to five working in psychology. I was, I, was, I was going to work one morning, I was running late, and asked this lady on the street what time it is, right? She looked at her watch, she said 9-11. Then she looked at me. <laughs> And she was like, no offense, though. <laughs> and I'm like, what? No offense? That's all you had to not say to not make it offensive. His signature 9-11 brown skin joke gets a lot of laughs. And finally, Gibran delivers his new material, the monkey joke. I get racially paranoid, though. I get self-conscious sometimes. Like, since things happen, I'll think, too. Like, I was walking with my friend, right? His name's Kadar. Black dude. We were both in Virginia. I'm brown, right? We are walking down, and someone shouted out, just so you know, right? Someone shouted out the word monkey. We were both confused. So I immediately looked at my friend, and I'm like, yo, Kadar, I'm so sorry that that guy called you that. He was like, really, Jerron? You're going to put that on me? You're eating a banana. How is that not you? And you're holding a monkey. This has nothing to do with rest of the layer. Right, fine, maybe you got me on that one. Maybe. <laughs> the joke gets a great response. It was just him with a banana and a monkey in his hand. Yeah, that was, that was pretty funny. <laughs> the comedy is the voice of everyone, and you need diversity to have the voice of everyone represented. So it's important to have all rapists represented in comedy. The house manager's warm words give him a big yeah, boost. Good. All right, cool. You did great. Thank you. Did good. I appreciate it. People had a good time. Yeah, so I always appreciate it. Thank you for having no. me. Yeah. I thought I had a great set. Uh, the monkey thing uh, worked pretty good. I said tonight, I'm like, you're eating a banana. And then they start laughing. And I'm like, well, I can't. And he's like, you're holding a monkey. Like, which is silly. In the joke, it's silly. But they're on board with that. So it's like another layer in a layer. And that may not work, but I, I can just squeeze the, the laughter like water in a, in a rag. Like I'm, I'm, I want to get the most out of it, you know? On the way home, Gibran reviews the night's jokes. He's one step closer to achieving his dream. To be a successful comedian, which only I can define. I want to be on a TV show, I want to create a TV show, I want to be in a movie, I want to create a movie, I want to direct a movie, I want to produce a movie. At a point where I'm so comfortable and content with what I've achieved that I can also utilize some of that time to reach out to other people that were once little brown versions of me that are looking to kind of achieve the same thing and then I can at least give them wisdom, help, 